So I thought I would just do a video analyzing some characters that I've been thinking about in movies that I've seen you know, multiple times. And something that came to mind that was really interesting was two of the primary antagonists of two films that are, well, one of them is a little bit older and one of them is more recent, but I think I was... I was just analyzing and thinking about these two antagonists, and um, and I realized how much they have in common with each other, and I just thought I'd like to talk about it. Those two, obviously, the title of this video are Hans Gruber from the movie Die Hard, which came out in 1988, and Colonel Hans Landa uh, that came from Inglorious Bastards, which came out in 2009. Aside from the similar first names, both being Hans, both being German, uh, there's a lot else that these characters have in common that I was, I was thinking about them. So I'll, sort, I'll first start off talking about Hans Gruber. Now, Hans Gruber, we're not told very much about his backstory and who he is in that movie. Similarly, we're not told that much about Hans Landa's backstory, uh, you know, about his past. All we know about Hans Gruber was that he was a member of the v radical Volksfrei movement of, of uh, Eastern Germany, and he was expelled from that movement, supposedly. And like a little snippet we heard about that. That's it. That's all we know about this guy. He came from Germany. He was in a, a radical uh, movement. And he was expelled from it. That's all we know. Um, so when he arrives in the first scene, we, he, we, we see that he's obviously leading a group of terrorists. But when he objects to being called a terrorist because people call him that. And then he goes, you know, who, who said we were terrorists? Um... Because you could argue that, well, he's not a terrorist. He doesn't view himself as a terrorist. How does he view himself, though? Well, um, th this movie, this video is going to have spoilers in it, by the way. So if you haven't seen the end of either of these movies, you know, either, or you don't mind being spoiled, then w move on. But um, the main thing that he views himself as um, is somebody who thinks he has the world figured out. And that's something that's really similar with Hans Landa as well. Both of these men are realists to the point of insanity, really, because they both perceive the world as it is. They're very rational, very logical people, and they both think they have it all figured out, and they're one step ahead of everybody. Um, and they and and they are they realistically are for a good majority of the screen time that they're both in the movie in their in their respective movies, the. The one of the great things about each of the characters as well that I was looking at was how they're both putting on an act almost throughout the entire time they're on screen. Let's look at Hans Gruber, played amazingly by Alan Rickman. He is a very, you know, he, he postures a lot. He talks a lot about, um, uh, he, he references Alexander the Great and how he liked to build model trains as a child, how he's very into, much into high fashion. He reads Time Magazine. He talks about all these things that, you know, posturing, making himself uh, worldly, you know, grandiose. He, they, they both have delusions of grandeur about them, especially um, Hans Gruber. But at the end of the day, he's not any of that. All he is is a thief. That's all he is. Bottom line. And he even admits it at the end of the movie. He says, I'm not just a thief, I'm an exceptional thief. So, and, and let's look at Hans Landa as well. Very similar. In Inglorious Bastards, every scene that he is in, you could argue, he is just putting on a facade, an act. It's all part of the interrogation. Every scene he's interrogating somebody, trying to get some kind of information, which he already knows. He already knows any of the information that he needs in every single scene. He's just putting it all together for a show. It's to make himself seem, you know, like this all-important figure who has it all figured out. He's playing with everybody, and he, he, he feels like he's superior to everybody. And in a lot of ways, he is, but... Similarly to Hans Gruber, at the end, what is he? Bottom line, he's not a Nazi. He even says he detests being called a Nazi, much like Hans Gruber detests being called a terrorist. What is he actually? Hans Landa is actually a detective. And as he says, a damn good detective. He put on the swastika, but it doesn't mean anything to him. He doesn't care about the Nazi ideology. 
All he cares about is advancing himself and advancing his cause. And his cause is to have everybody figured out and, um, you know, ultimately show that he can outthink anybody else. And that is really striking, these similarities between these two characters, how they're just putting on facades the entire time they're on screen, hiding who they really are and what they really are. They're just, one's just a thief and one is just a detective. That's it. Um, when you get down to it. I mean, there, there are certain other levels to their characters that they both put on throughout the time they're on screen. You know, you, you get the sense that maybe there's something more, but they're really not. They're just, they are what they are. Um, and then, obviously, another similarity between the two characters is their adversaries, who they are coming up against. Because, it's similarly, like a hero is only as strong as his villain. A villain is only as strong as the hero of a story. So in Die Hard, we have Bruce Willis playing John McClane. And John McClane, he is the exact opposite of Hans Gruber. Hans Gruber is calculating, meticulous, um, you know, sophisticated, uh, you know, he, a worldly. What is Bruce Willis? Bruce Willis' character in John McClane, John McClane, all he is, he is just like, he represents chaos, essentially. Because he, nothing he does is planned. Everything he does is just random. He's thrown into situations. He's able to really, he's able to think on his feet very quickly and that's how he is able to outsmart, uh, you know, outsmart and eventually figure out Hans Gruber. Is because, well, he does think about things, but he's also, he's instinctual. He's thinking on his feet a lot. Now let's look at Hans Lana, who he comes up against. His main foe, the, the, hero, the heroes of Inglorious Bastards, if you could even call them that, are the, the bastards themselves, the, all the, the Jew soldiers that are, you know, uh, uh, going throughout... Europe and scalping the Nazis. Uh, and the great thing about them is that they're the polar opposite as well. They're not really, they're not like Hans Landa. In fact, he's disappointed when he meets them finally. He says, you know, I was expecting something a little bit more impressive than just uh, a, a group of soldiers who, who are really kind of you know they put themselves in a situation in the movie theater at the end of the at the end of the uh, at the end of Inglorious Bastards. They put themselves in the situation at the end where Lana's has got them all figured out. He knows what their plan is. He figures out that they're trying to blow it up. He gets their dynamite. You know, and he knows who they are right from the beginning. Right when they come in, he knows who they are. He knows he's just toying with them when he's speaking to them and he's speaking Italian and they're like butchering their way through Italian and talking to him, pretending to be like photographers. and It's just, he's got it figured out. And he knows he's got it figured out. And, you know, another thing that's really similar with these characters as well is how they underestimate the hero at the very end of the movie. Han, uh, Hans Gruber in Die Hard, he's so logical to the point where he can't comprehend that, that John McClane is still even alive that he's going to interfere with his plan, and he does. He comes through at the very end. You know, he, he again, he, Hans Gruber is posturing at the very end of the movie still, uh, and then John McClane, Bruce Willis, is able to shoot him when, he, when he's got him, you know, caught off guard, and that's the end of Hans Gruber. And then Hans Landa, the great thing, at the end of that film, you don't really know if he lives or dies. It's kind of ambiguous, but at the same time, Hans Landa feels like, oh, he's got this. He's got this great deal that he struck with like the um with with somebody overseas in the US government, you know, to be exonerated of all of his crimes and to receive like the merit of honor and then medal of merit, and then also to uh, you know, receive his own private land on Nantucket or something. So he thinks he's got this all figured out, and then at the very end, the bastards decide to screw him and say, you know what, we don't care about this deal that you cooked up. We'll just say, you know, whatever. We'll, we'll just say, we'll make up something else that happened because we're not below that. We, we're, they have no code. Hans Landa, as messed up as he is, he has a code he lives by. And he, these warped values that he has, he still has them. The bastards don't have any values at all. They're, they're going to kill you no matter what. They're either going to, and like they said it, it, earlier in the film, they're going to kill every, every Nazi they come across, except for one, just so he can spread the rumor 
the rumors and fuel the fire about them. And they, that's that. That's really it. They don't have any other rules that they live by. Um, so in that respect, it's almost like guerrilla warfare. And Hans Landa doesn't comprehend that because he thinks they're soldiers. I mean, they are soldiers, but he thinks that they have something that they have to follow, some code of ethics, but they really don't. They don't have anything they have to follow because they're not even, like, technically a existing faction of the military. Um, they're just... They're just like rogue soldiers on a mission, basically. So, in the end, both of the villains severely underestimate their main, the main protagonists of the stories that they're in. And, you know, as I was just thinking about this, the, the, these two characters are eerily similar, and they're both great villains. Christoph Waltz obviously won an Oscar for his portrayal as Hans Landa. It's going to go down in history as one of the best. I think it still is one of the best a acting jobs I've ever seen. And then <sighs> Alan Rickman was shamefully ignored by the Oscars for his role because that that without that role, that movie doesn't work. Without that villain, the other Die Hard movies really didn't work. And why didn't they work? Because their villain just was not as compelling and not as interesting as Hans Gruber. He was a very interesting villain to follow. And, you know, the other movies couldn't live up to him. It was a shame that Alan Rickman wasn't even nominated for an Oscar for that film because it was it was a great performance. Uh, so you know, just uh, I just thought these these characters were really interesting, and uh, you know, I was thinking about other characters in other movies too over the last few weeks. But I kept coming back to these two and just thinking about how how eerily similar they are. Um, even though these movies, you could get two completely different movies between Die Hard and Inglorious Bastards. Um, so yeah, that, that's pretty much everything I have to say about these characters. Feel free to comment below on your opinion on these two characters or on the movies that they're in. Uh, you know, do you think they're pretty similar or do you think that they're really different? Am I way off here? Um, you know, feel free to talk about any of that. Uh, also talk about, uh, you know, which, which actor you think did a better job. Do you think that, uh, Christoph Waltz did a better job with his role or do you think Alan Rickman did a better job with his role? Um, and then also comment on as well, just maybe your overall opinion on this video. I might be do, I might do some more of these videos in the future. I'm not really sure yet, uh, if it's going to be this format still where I'm comparing characters, I might just be comparing movies or comparing directors. Not really sure yet. So feel free to comment below and, uh, thanks for watching.